Hey guys, this is James Rhodes here. This is um, the video guide for Scapers Den's Harakan um, guide that I've got on the website at the moment. Um, so at the moment, if you've probably already read the guide, you'll be familiar with the setup that I'm going to use for this. Um, the main armor that you should be using is the full obsidian, which you get after completing the Brink of Extinction quest and doing the Fight Cauldron activity. You get a few obsidian shards to craft into bars, and with a high enough smithing level, you'll be able to make the obsidian armor. Now, the great thing about the obsidian armor is you'll see on there that it has um, Tsar damage reduction on there, which is great, especially for when you're fighting the Jads that you'll see multiples of in the fight kiln. So my setup is fa fairly simple. So we're going to be using full magic. We're going to be using some of the best equipment available in game. So that's the Noxious Staff, the Dragon Rider Amulet, the Supreme Runic Accuracy, so I'll be pretty much hitting everything. Um, Asylum Surgeon Ring, which is great for adrenaline um, in, when you're using a lot of thresholds. And it's also a, a very great all-round ring altogether, to be honest. And then also Sign of Death, just in case a Jad catches me off guard. Inventory comp composition is going to be of some overloads, some super restores, mainly food. You're going to need some melee weapons. The reason for that is because um, during that you'll find some deals that will appear. You need to use the pickaxe in your tool in your tool um, belt, uh, which is which is triggered by using melee weapons on the deals which will crack the armor and then you can continue maging. For my familiar I'm going to use a steel titan just to blitz through this as quick as you can. Um, for those who are new to the kiln I highly recommend taking a familiar that um, stores food instead. The rewards of the the fight kiln are that you can get these awesome capes, the Tokar cows, which I've got here, I've got the melee one here, and also the mage one, some of the best capes in game, providing a bit of prayer bonus and magic damage. They look rather cool as well. Now if you're really lucky, you can get what's called a volcanic shard, and that's essentially the boss pet, which I'll show you now. Here's Shrimpy. So this is the boss pet for the Harakin, just basically a miniature Harakin head. Very cute. So I'm going to get rid of him for now. I'm going to summon the Steel Titan, which is in, again, the form of a Blood Pouncer. I'm going to go straight in. I'm going to choose Fast Spawn for this. So once Tokar Hawk has gone through his dialogue here, you'll be in the fight kiln. Now for new players, I suggest you run straight to the south. There is a small L shape just here where I'm standing which you can use to safe spot a few enemies. Apart from that though, overload up, select a spell in my case, and blitz through it as fast as you can. If you're wearing the armor, you don't really have to worry about um, taking much damage. When you need to, just use Soul Split just to regain any lost health. To be honest, I'll probably see myself probably eating five sharks, maybe even less throughout this. In total, there are 37 waves if you include the Harakan boss. So it's quite fast, it's a lot faster than the. Um, a lot faster than the fight caves. Um, kill time for this is usually about 20 minutes if you're really really good at it. Between 20 to 30 minutes maximum. Using the Steel Titan there for general DPS. If there's some fairly stronger creatures I'll start using scrolls but in the meantime there's no need to use any scrolls at the moment. You'll, not, you'll notice in the middle um, where the invulnerability crystals are, there are a few crystals that do spawn there. Um, if you're new, I would recommend picking up the uh, invulnerability, constitution, and also the restoration crystal. Uh, very useful assets in keeping your, um, your HP and your prayer very high. So 
so there's the restoration crystal. I'm literally just going to eat a shark just to make space for that. Because the crystals do stack and you do get multiples of each. Picking off the stronger targets first. There we go. Okay, so on wave five, there's going to be a deal spawning in this northwest corner, northeast corner, sorry. You're going to want to switch to your me melee weapons. Go to your melee ability bar. His armor is now destroyed. You can then go back to your mage and then kill it with mage like so. And that's the deal taken care of. A lot easier than a lot of people think. You just carry on killing as normal. It's a magic crystal. Um, you can pick these up. I'm not going to because um, the accuracy on my staff is way too high anyway. So I'll just hit everything. But if you find yourself needing those extra mage gains, uh, the magic crystal will take you up to. It will boost your magic level from 99 to 148. Useful thing to know when you do use that to boost that you don't use the um, the torment prayer or curse in this case because for one reason or another that cancels out the ability. I'm not sure why. Jagex haven't said why, but it's just something that users have noticed. At this stage, I'm going to put some uh, soul split on. Just going to regain some of that lost health. There we go. Nice and easy. My prayer's dropped, so I'm going to drink a bit of a restore potion there. Carry on. The ranged crystal. I don't need a ranged crystal, so I'm going to leave that on the floor. Slightly bigger uh, monster here, so I'm going to use Steel Titan when I can. I think I used that a bit late, to be honest. Wave 9, this is going to be just a bunch of large rangers now. So if you're new, if you're taking a bit of damage, just protect ranged on wave 9, because this will all be rangers. Now wave 10, when that comes, there's going to be a Jad spawning in the southwest corner. Um, if you're fairly new, stick to that L shape just in front of my character and then when you're ready the Jad will spawn in this corner so I'm literally going to try and uh, kill the Jad as quick as possible as quick as possible <laughs> yeah I can't believe I just did that to be honest um, <laughs> There we go, so um, you go into a cutscene after wave 10, wave 11, this is going to be, the majority of this is going to be mages, so if you're fairly low level then protect from mage here is a must here, but for the next uh, 9 to 10 waves it's just going to be a lot of mages attacking you, you might get the, um, the old ranger here and there but it's predominantly mages.
I wonder if anybody else has done that before. I'm just thinking, is it really that easy just to de-breath de a jad like that? <laughs> As I said, there's the odd, there's the odd uh, ranger guy that does spawn, but it is mostly mages from these this point onwards until wave twenty. If you get into a bit of a trouble, that L shape is still there. Still we use that. Titan managed to take care of that guy, that was awesome. Invulnerability, so I'm gonna pick that up again. Why isn't that dead yet? There we go. <laughs> the next wave you'll want to pay attention to is wave 19. That's when the next deal spawns. Restoration, just gonna pick that up. Gonna put torment back on. some reason my character didn't deep breath there but there we go okay this guy you have to watch out for sometimes if you're weak to melee um, put protect from melee on but apart from that I'm just gonna soul split my health back Once again, do have to emphasise if you are relatively new or red relatively low level, this L shape that I'm standing next to does provide cover, so use it if you need to. Gonna metamorphosis again. Get some prayer back. Okay, so wave 19, this is all gonna be mages again. I'm gonna put soul split on. Without protect from mage on, you're gonna take some serious damage from all the mages. Um, again, a deal is going to spawn here in a second. Um, he should be your number one priority, so I'm going to switch to melee, take him out as quick as I can. Otherwise he'll start hitting 900s. His armor's gone now, so just kill him. Or I can wild magic and mage, that works too. There we go. Soul split isn't good to be honest here, because these mages do hit quite a lot. Right, wave 20, there's another Jad spawning in this corner. And he's dead. If you've seen the, um, the clips from my other video, um, you should be able to recognise his attack patterns. Just pray mage or range accordingly. Okay, so in this next cutscene, 
Um, you're going to be up against a bunch of uh, melee, um, melee monsters. <laughs> So either protect from melee or use soul split. Entirely up to you. If you're maging, you'll find this a lot more easy than the other waves. So wave 21, you're going to be bombarded by all these Tokahers. There's loads of off, so let's just top that up. Best ones to use here, actually, is Dragon Breath and also Chain, because it just gets rid of them all. If you're finding prayer a struggle, the restoration crystals you've got there do restore, restore prayer, so there you go. Just going to metamorphosis again. I do prefer, prefer um, metamorphosis over sunshine. Um, sunshine is obviously better, but metamorphosis um, you get to run around a bit more, so you have the freedom of just like moving around like this while still you know you've got like a massive damage buff so I prefer that it's just personal preference but sunshine is better to use Magic makes short work of these melee guys, so it's really easy. Constitution Crystal, I'm going to pick that up just in case. At this stage you do get piled by lots of you know, melee people, so... Don't, uh, don't get... Um, don't panic if this happens, honestly. I'm going to sunshine. One hopes you'd kill that. See, that's why I don't like sunshine, because you have to you end up running out. And then you lose your sunshine buff. Invulnerability, don't mind if I do. Now, the worst wave ever in the fight kiln is coming up, and that is wave 28. Um, on this wave, you're going to get about seven to eight um, deals spawning I believe um, so and if you have all of those making the ceiling collapse on you that's thousands of damage you're taking at the same time it's not good um, in this particular instance I would advise activating your constitution crystal um, people who are 99 constitution that brings your HP well above 20,000 and keeps it at that level so that you don't get KO'd by any random deals on that wave. To get a bit of damage and I'm slacking here. There we go. Wave 28, activate your constitution crystal. Deals will be appearing on all corners. Kill this mage first, so that your auto attack doesn't do anything silly. Now switch to dry gauze or your melee weapon. You're going to have to focus these deals down one by one, unfortunately. Because there's so many, I'm just going to stick to melee at this point, using turmoil. See, my uh, HP is now solidly over 22,000. If I'm perfectly honest, uh, this is the worst wave you're going to encounter. If you're going to die on any wave, it would usually be this one. Steel Titans can also um, 
use abilities to hit straight through the armor, which is very useful in this way. Just something I was testing there. Apparently, Flowey does break through multiple armor, so that's always good to know. See the uh, 1400 from the ceiling damage. If all of them were hitting you with that, then that would have caused a lot of pain. So continue like normal on wave 29. There's not much threat here. It's just these guys. There's about six to eight of them. Six by the looks of it. Wave 30. There's going to be another Jad again. And he's going to be spawning on the same corner. He Jads will always spawn on the southwest corner until you get to the very later phases. And it is increments of 10 waves, so 10, 20, 30. They're the main waves you have to remember when it comes to jazz. They're easy to remember, actually. So here comes the jad. Just pray accordingly to what he attacks you with. And he's dead. My overload's run out, so I'm just going to top that up. Going to enter another cutscene. Okay, there's nothing to save you now um, in terms of uh, hot safe spots. Only this middle area and the bit just to the edge there, but that really won't do anything at this point. The arena is only going to get smaller and smaller if you've noticed. How dare my deep breath miss. So wave 31, 32, 33. It's four rangers, four meliers, four majors. Very easy waves. And then you'll enter another cutscene again. Kill that either, what a fail. Right. At this point it's very important because you're now gonna get a Jad spawning every wave. There'll be one Jad and then another Jad and then there's gonna be another wave on wave 36 where it's two jads at once don't panic it's easier than it sounds so on this one it's going to spawn on the south eastern side just protect from whatever it's using and just kill it promptly once that's dealt with you can take care of the other two Wave 35, the Jad is now going to spawn on the northeast side. So just get a prayer ready. And just take care of it. There we go. Now for wave 36, to deal with these two Jads, stand behind here on this particular square you'll end up drawing both the jads in and I promise it will be easier than it sounds take a step in this diagonal direction this jad will attack, just pray whatever it's take using now run over here that is awkward 
don't do that, don't let your prayer drop, um, and just carry on attacking it. There we go, all done. Final fight, Hierarchin himself. So at this point you can either protect from mage or range. You're going to have tentacles coming out of the lava from all sides. So it doesn't really matter which one you protect it's as long as it's one of them. I'm just going to source split and kill the tentacles. Over time Harakin's head will spawn out of the um, out of the lava and that's what you need to kill in order to win. Make sure I've got more prayer this time. Just gonna activate a restore crystal that puts HP and prayer back up to full. Right, the head is out. Use all the thresholds you can on it. Wild magic, sonic wave, dragon breath, followed by an asphyxiate. You want to try and do as much damage as you can to it. And also Steel Titan as well. I forgot to use that. He'll dive back under, continue attacking the tentacles until the head reappears again. The head will only appear on the east, west or south side, never the north side. So the best thing to do is just to stand in this sort of middle area you'll see a yellow dot appear on the minimap that's a bit further out than all the other minimap uh, other dots on the minimap so that's how you'll know it's that that's Harkin's head and he'll always be central of the platform there he is again let's just finish him off And there we have it, all done. 24 minutes, that's not too bad. Could be a lot quicker, but... So at this point you get to choose one of two prizes. You either get the magic cape, which I showed you earlier. Well, the reason why I got the magic cape is because I used magic. If you use melee or ranged predominantly through the whole thing, then you get the choice of that cape instead or as I'm going to select an uncut onyx which is worth about a million GP okay so that's all over probably a lot easier than you thought it would be if you've got any questions don't hesitate to put a comment in the YouTube video below alternatively come over to Scapers Den's forums more than happy to answer any questions you guys have take care cheers bye